Welcome to Candid Conversation number 512. Today's question, I believe I've covered this a while back, but it's a very important topic. The question is, what is repentance? And the reason it's so important is because churchianity has hijacked that term to make it about your own works rather than about the cross work of Christ and grace. Galatians 6.14 says that I should not glory save in the cross of Jesus Christ by whom I am crucified to the world and the world is crucified to me. It's all about the cross work of Christ. <coughs> and what man has done is man likes to glory in his flesh. Two verses before Galatians 6.14 in Galatians 6.12 it says that those who want to make a fair show in the flesh constrain you to be circumcised. Today you could say they constrain you to be baptized or you could say they constrain you to repent. And you may say, well what's wrong with repentance? Doesn't when John the Baptist came about, and see this is why they've hijacked the term, is because churchianity focuses on the red letters. They think that we should be following Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And so the first gospel that you read when you're, when you're going through there is in Matthew 3, 2, where John the Baptist says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then in Matthew 4, 16, the next time you're told the gospel, it's Jesus, and he also says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And so, because churchianity wants repentance to be, well, because churchianity wants you to follow works. Because that's where the money is. If I get salvation exclusively by the cross work of Christ, and I trust in that alone to be saved, then what that does is it changes the church from a place that has works for your salvation to a place that has grace. Historically, all religions have you working to some extent. They want you to work because that is the, you have, you're a three-part being. You've got body or flesh, soul, and spirit. Body, soul, and spirit. Before you're saved, all you do is whatever the lust of your flesh are because in your flesh dwells no good thing. Once you recognize your sin and trust in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for your sin, by the way, that's the gospel, then God says that your flesh is dead and your spirit is alive in Christ. So you are to walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh, Galatians 5.16. But the problem is, the moment you are saved, although you have salvation and you've trusted in the cross of Christ to save you, you don't have any sound doctrine other than that built up in the inner man. And so if your soul tries to get input from your spirit, there's not much there. But your flesh has all kinds of input. Because your entire life, all you've been doing is the lust of the flesh. Living by the course of this world that Satan has people going by. It takes time for you to... 1 Corinthians 15.31, Paul says, I die daily. As Christians... What we should be doing is 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We are to read, study God's word, and apply that word to our lives. But that requires work. To listen to my flesh, it doesn't require any work because my flesh has already been built up through my sin nature, through the course of this world, uh, working together. As Romans 7 says, the sin nature, when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. Because sin worked with the commandment to work all manner of concupiscence. And so that's been going on. Every single person who's ever lived has that situation in their life where they have had plenty of experience following the flesh because their spirit was dead in trespasses and sin. So that's all that they did. They're very experienced in that. Once you're saved, 
God says walk in the Spirit, but people don't do that because it takes work. Dying daily, studying God's Word, learning that sound doctrine and making decisions based upon that doctrine on a day-to-day -day basis, resisting the lust of the flesh and using the mind of Christ to make your decisions. That requires work. You have to fight against your flesh because your flesh lusteth against the Spirit, Galatians 5.17 says. And so you have to fight against your flesh and you have to make a conscious effort every single day to read and believe God's Word and make your decisions based upon that. And so because very few people will do that, churches are full of people who are just following their flesh. A lot of them aren't saved because they haven't heard a clear gospel. And even if they have heard and believed a clear gospel, the doctrine after that has them following the flesh. Because the church is all about money. The love of money is the root of all evil, for which what some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. 1 Timothy 6.10 so if I preach a message of grace, it's exclusively the cross work of Christ that saves you. And even after I'm saved, I only glory in the cross work of Christ. If my message is solely grace, then not many people are going to go because it doesn't appeal to the flesh. So that means that it's going to be hard for that church to survive, finding people who will believe the gospel and desire to work every single day to learn and apply sound doctrine. Not many people want to do that. It's like having a gym and you only want people who will go every single day to the gym and everybody else is kicked out or they're, they've made feel bad because you're telling them you need to go to the gym every single day. You're not going to get many people to go to your gym. So if you, and so that's why when it comes to the gospel, churchianity won't preach a grace message or eternal security. They won't preach that. They've got to throw works in there somehow. It's all about works. And so, but because if they don't do that, they're not going to get the people. And since they, so that's why, first off, that's why they have you follow the red letters. Now Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus did not preach a works-based salvation. He said, come unto me and cease from your labor. Hebrews 3 says, there remaineth a rest for the people of God. And those who are in his rest have ceased from their own labors. So God has, even in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, he's preaching grace. Jesus is preaching grace just like Paul. But the difference is Jesus is preaching to an apostate nation. And Galatians 3.24 says the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. I mentioned the gospel. The gospel is recognize your sin. That's step one. And step two, trust in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for your sin. Two-step process. Because of the apostasy of Israel, they needed the law to teach them to be the schoolmaster to teach them that they are sinners. And so that's what Paul, that's what Jesus is doing in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, teaching them of their sin. In Matthew 5, he doesn't exclude the law, he amplifies it. He says, you've heard it said, thou shalt not kill. But I say, if you hate a brother without a cause, you've killed him in your heart. You've heard it said, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, if you look after a woman with lust in your heart, you've committed adultery with her in your heart. He says, except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5, 20. So he amplifies or teaches the law to show them it's a heart issue, to show them that they are sinners, so that they will be justified by faith, so that they will recognize their sin and believe the gospel. For them, the gospel was 
repent and be water baptized, Acts 2.38. They are at that repentance phase. Repentance means to change your mind. When John the Baptist says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, it means stop trusting in your own righteousness. You, you, Israel is in a religion, a Jewish religion, whereby the pastors, Jeremiah 23, have destroyed and scattered the sheep of my pasture, God says. Because they have taught for, as Jesus says in Mark 7, they have taught for doctrine, traditions of men. Full well ye reject the commandments of God, that ye may keep your own traditions. And so, repentance is all about changing their mind. Remember the two-step process to be saved. You have to recognize that you are a sinner. That's step one. Then, once you do that, you look for the solution. See, the, the main problem that the world has isn't a lack of trusting in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for their sin. It's that they don't recognize that they have a sin problem. Sin is a dirty word today. Churches, most churches won't even mention that word. Most people don't agree. They'll say, oh, well, truth is relative. You know, well, that's good for you. Yeah, you go to that church. That's fine. That's good for you. But uh, I'm okay with what I'm doing. You know, don't judge me because I'm doing what I'm doing and I'm fine with it. Repentance is about changing your mind. And since Israel was an apostasy, that's why both John the Baptist and Jesus start out with the word repent. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then John told him later in Matthew 3, we'll bring forth, when, when the Pharisees came to the baptism of John, John says, bring forth fruits, meet for repentance. Meaning, you need to abandon your religion and recognize your sin. And then, once you recognize your sin, now you know you got a problem, then you look for the solution. See, if all I'm doing is saying to people, trust in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for my sin, for your sin, if the person I'm teaching that to does not believe they are a sinner, or they believe that whatever they're doing in their religion is sufficient to cover their sin, then they will never believe in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for their sin because they think that they either don't have sin or they already have the solution for the sin. So the first step among unbelievers is to preach repentance, meaning to change your mind about your sinful condition. Recognize that you are a sinner and that you, through religion, cannot solve your own sin and that it requires and so then once you recognize that now you're ready for the solution which is Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for your sin but see churchianity understands they're about money and power and they understand that the way they get money and control over people is by building a works-based religion if they preach grace well then the religion has no power over them. They get salvation, they have eternal life, but now I don't have to go to your church and do the things that you say to do in order to maintain my salvation or be right with God or to serve the Lord. The church has no control over me. Now, if the church teaches sound doctrine, I should be going to that church to learn the doctrine. But it's not going to affect where I live in eternity. And so the normal attitude, since the flesh lusteth against the spirit, your flesh is used to controlling your life. You go by the course of this world. Then the normal course of action is going to be to follow the flesh. So when I preach a grace message, which is about the spirit and saying death to the flesh, then most people aren't going to follow it. So what churchianity has done, since Jesus taught the law in order to recognize their sin so that they would repent, meaning change their mind about their sin, churchianity takes that message and instead of the law being their schoolmaster to bring you unto Christ that you might be justified by faith, they make the law the end-all be-all. 
And sure, they have to bring in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection at some point, or else why did Jesus die? So they mix works and grace. But Romans 11:6 6 says, grace and works don't mix. If it's grace, then it's not works. If it's works, it's not grace. Otherwise, work is no more work and grace is no more grace. It's either one or the other. It cannot be a mixture. But churchianity isn't concerned about your soul salvation. It's concerned about money and power. And the way it gets that predominantly, because most people are not going to follow the spirit, they are going to follow the lust of their flesh, is the churchianity caters to the flesh. And it's a lot easier to twist Matthew through John to make it to be about the flesh than it is to twist Romans through Philemon to make it about the flesh because Romans through Philemon is talking to people who have already believed. And so we are not under the law, but under grace, Romans 6.14 says. So Paul preaches grace. He's given grace for those who've already been saved. Here's how you should live, under grace. Jesus is giving law because the people are not saved yet, they're apostate. And Jesus isn't saying, live by the law, do everything in the law. He's saying, do the law, and when you recognize that you failed to do the law, then you believe the gospel. So, Paul is further down the line. He's talking to save people who are now under grace. Jesus is talking to lost people, and so therefore they are still under the law. And so, when churchianity comes along and all they want is a works-based salvation so that they can get money and power over you, then they take Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and then they change the gospel in there because the gospel is always faith. Hebrews 11, 6 says, without faith it is impossible to please God. God is always trying to get man to believe him. And once you believe whatever the message is that God tells you, you have the gift of eternal life. So Jesus preached grace, just like Paul preaches grace. But it's just he preached the law to teach them that they needed grace. And Paul preaches grace because the people have already learned the lesson of the law. And so he's teaching them how to live. Jesus is talking about salvation. Paul is talking about sanctification. Salvation comes by recognizing your sin and then believe in the gospel. And so that's why the message starts with the word repent. The word repent means to change your mind. What that does is repentance, I mean, even today, today's gospel, whatever gospel you have, regardless of what dispensation you live in, the gospel to you is first, this first step is repent. And repent means change your mind. Stop trusting in your own righteousness trust in God to save you. And then the second step is because you're a sinner. So you recognize your sin when you repent, you change your mind. And then the second step is you believe the gospel given to you. But again, churchianity is trying to get you under works. So they're not going to tell you that repentance has changed your mind. Well, how do I know it's changed your mind? Romans 5, 8. God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You ask churchianity, what is repentance? And most everybody will say, it means to turn from your sins. That's works. That's me in my own flesh, turning from my sin, stopping my own sin. But that's contrary to Romans 5.8. Romans 5.8 says, God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 7.18 says, In my flesh dwelleth no good thing. Romans 3 says, There is none good, no, not one. There is none righteous, no, not one. So how am I going to turn from my sin? I can't. Repentance in churchianity is all about works. It's turn from your sin. The correct biblical definition of repentance is simply change your mind. It's a grace word, really. It's that God says, you you are a sinner and you can't stop sinning due to your flesh. And so you got to stop trying to please God in your own works. So stop elevating yourself by trying to turn from your sins and do good works and allow the cross work of Christ to change you, to take the sin that you had and wash it in the blood of Christ. 
so that you now have the gift of eternal life. So repentance, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. Those are gospels for Israel's program during the at hand phase of the kingdom. But for us today in the dispensation of grace, the first step is also repentance. But repentance does not mean turn from your sin. The moment you say turn from your sin, that's a works-based salvation. And the Bible says I can't do that because I'm not good. And that's why God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Christ, uh, in Romans 5, 6, two verses before that, it says, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. The people who try to turn from their sins, Christ did not die for them because they are self-righteous. They say that they're godly. Christ only died for the ungodly. He only died for sinners. And so the moment the churchianity preaches repent and they define repentance as turn from your sin. You ask 100 Christians out there, 99 of them are going to tell you repent means turn from your sins. They have engraved works in there. When repentance has really changed your mind. It's not a law thing. It's a grace thing. I cannot turn from my sins. If repentance means turn from my sins, then no one will be saved. Because no one can turn from their sins. I have to recognize my sin. Change my mind. Stop trying to turn from my sins. If anything, repentance means stop trying to turn from your sins. Recognize you can't do it. And then, second step, believe the gospel. In Mark 1, 14, I think it is, John the Baptist says, repent and believe the gospel. So what is repentance? It means change your mind. It means recognize your sin. You do that, then that's a grace thing, and then you can believe the gospel. But if you think it means turn from your sins, walk an aisle, confess your sins, try better next time, all those things put you in bondage to the law and to works. And it is, it is a false gospel that will send you to hell if that's what you believe. Repentance, change your mind. It does not mean turn from your sins. Thanks for watching.